If you guys have a four stroke, four cycle engine on your equipment, you are going to have a carburetor that looks just like this, similar to this at least with that float bowl on the bottom of it. You fill your fuel tank up and all of a sudden you see gasoline pouring out the carburetor. Usually it pours out on the air filter side, which is very clear. You can see it's because it's making a mess all over the place. Sometimes though, it will flood through on the other side of the carburetor, which you can't really identify because it's flooding through into your engine, into your engine oil. It raises the level of your engine oil up and your engine oil smells like gasoline. No matter what side that carburetor is flooding through on, the problem in here is gonna be the same problem. If that sounds like a symptom you are having, you are definitely watching the right video unless you have a Briggs & Stratton or a Tecumseh engine. A little bit different than this one. If you have a Briggs & Stratton or a Tecumseh, I got a quick link up here for you in the information button to get back to that video. This video is gonna help you if you have a Honda, uh, a, a Chonda, I call them Chondas, Chinese knockoffs, uh, Kohler's, Power Moors, things like that. Pretty much everything that is not a Briggs & Stratton or a Tecumseh. Today I am going to show you why that's happening and how you can fix it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Steve Small Engine Saloon again. Thanks for tuning in. Oh yeah, my website right there, .com. I got a quick link up here for you in the information button too if you want to get back to my website. I really think you're gonna like our website when you go look at it. Nothing goes better with a carburetor job like this than Grolsch beer, man. However, I have actually heard that some people will do this job using other beers. I've never tried it myself. Why don't you put some comments down right underneath this video and tell me what beer you prefer to accomplish a carburetor job. Now, I know that a lot of you do understand how one of these four-stroke, four-cycle carburetors work with that bowl on the bottom of it. Just in case you don't, I'm going to set you up for this a little bit. I think this will help you understand how one of these works a little bit better. Most of you guys and girls out there understand how your toilet works. The back uh, tank of your toilet. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. This is going to make sense in a second. When you flush your toilet the water starts coming back into that tank. There's a float that is connected to a shutoff valve. As the water level keeps coming up higher and higher, the float is, high, is coming higher and higher, floating on that water. And when it gets to a certain height, it shuts the valve off so more water is, doesn't just keep pouring into your toilet. That is the exact same concept of how one of these four stroke, four cycle carburetors work with that float bowl on the bottom. I'm gonna show you that right now. Right there. There's your float. It goes up and down like that. And as that bowl is filling up with fuel from your fuel tank, it floats that float up. It comes up like that and, and pushes that needle and seat closed so no more fuel is coming into it and it's not draining out. And that's why it's draining out because that needle in seat, that float valve is not seating. It is not sealing properly. It is simple as that. Let's have a look at that needle in seat. All you have to do on this carburetor is pull this little pin out right here. Don't lose it. And then that whole float pulls off and the needle is still on there. Now you'll notice that that needle right there has a rubber tip on it. Yeah, I know it's Viton or something like that on some cases. I'm just gonna say rubber for now because that's just gonna make it simpler. If you have a little magnifying glass and you look at that needle, look at that rubber tip. Sometimes you will see that there's a little piece of crud stuck on there that you can actually just look at it and just take your fingernail and just pick it off. Sometimes it's something is just stuck on there and that's why it's not going up into the seat and sealing properly. Now this one looks pretty good. 
there's nothing stuck on there, but sometimes also on that rubber tip right there, you'll see a groove. If it's really old, you'll see a groove that's kind of cut around on that uh, rubber tip. Now we have to look down into the seat, right into where that needle goes down in there, right in there. Look in there with your magnifying glass too, right down into the bottom where that rubber tip of that, that needle is gonna seal in there. And sometimes down there, you will actually see a little piece of crud stuck on the bottom. It's like a half the size of a grain of sand sometimes. You can barely see it, but that's all it takes to make that rubber tip of your needle not seal into that seat because these seats on these Honda style carburetors are not replaceable like the Briggs and Stratton and the Tecumseh's. So you see something down there, that's kind of hard to clean out. Sometimes they're brass, sometimes they're plastic down there. Same concept, there's something stuck on there, that's why that's not sealing. Q-tips, boys. Look at that. You take a Q-tip, everybody's got Q-tips, but you'll see that a full size, on a, on a lot of these carburetors, a full size Q-tip won't go in there. Just grab a little bit of the fuzz. See that? I'm just pulling a little bit of that fuzz off of there. And it makes that Q-tip a little bit smaller. Little carb spray on there. You just wet that with a little carb spray. And then put it down in there. And it'll fit right in there. You can do it by hand. Just push it in as far as it goes and start spinning that Q-tip around. Pull it back out and look down there with your magnifying glass again. And if there's still something stuck on there, you know what you can do? I've done a lot of times. Cordless drill, put your Q-tip right in there like a drill bit. Put on high speed and you can do that. And then really hone the bottom of that out. Now, once you've done that, look down there with your magnifying glass again, and you're probably going to see that it's nice and clean in the bottom again. I've actually seen people, I, I've actually done this myself, where you can take uh, toothpaste, like seriously, toothpaste, put it on the end, help you clean out the bottom. Uh, valve grinding compound, fine valve grinding compound will buff the bottom of that out. You just put it on the end of your Q-tip and buzz that out. Make sure it's nice and clean. Put that back together, get that pin back in there so that works now. Now, you can actually test this before you put it all back together. All you do, leave the bowl off, hook your, put, it, put it by your unit, whatever your unit you're using, and put your, uh, your fuel line back on there and open your fuel line up. You're gonna see fuel pouring out of here Lift that that uh, float up till it it's level like that. If that stops pouring fuel out of there, when that float is about level like that, you just fix the problem. If it keeps pouring out, even when you lift that up like way high like that, and fuel is still coming out, there is a problem. The needle maybe that groove around the tip of the needle maybe is uh, too big or there's still something wrong. Sometimes on Hondas especially, they, have a, they don't have a metal seat, they have a plastic seat. Sometimes they get warped. There's nothing you can do with that carburetor after that. I gotta tell you guys this, I've done this many times. You can buy a new needle for this thing. From Honda, they're like 30 bucks for just the needle. And I gotta tell you, you got about a 20% chance of the new needle actually working with the seat in there and it's gonna seal properly. If you clean that seat and clean that needle as good as you can and it still leaks through, then it is just cost effective to just buy a new carburetor. I got a link on the bottom of my uh, video right here in the description, you'll see sometimes these carburetors are cheaper than buying a needle from Honda. Well, I hope that 
that helped some of you guys and girls out there. Uh, maybe I saved you some money. I sure hope I did. That's why I'm always doing this. It is definitely worth it for you just to try to clean that needle and seat on this. It works most of the time. Give me that thumbs up button, guys. Subscribe to my channel. Share this with your friends. And you know what else? If you guys are watching this video right now, maybe you want to see a more in-depth video on how to clean this thing, a Honda-style carburetor, from beginning to end. I think you're gonna. There's a link for it right there. Watch that video next. I think you're gonna like that one too. And until my next video, working on it right now. Grolf Beer, Steve out.